You don't need the whole story. I managed to think that I had this video already hiding somewhere and spend more time looking for it than just re-recording it. I probably spent more time than you spent reading this very short piece. Uh, and I know that you're going into Thanksgiving and I don't want you to feel like it's, you know, I really wish I had this video from Halibay because I just can't enjoy my, my turkey without hearing from him. Um, so I'll give you, I'll keep this short. I'll keep this not as short as the piece is, not as short as that manifesto is, but pretty short. Uh, I, this kind of runs through a lot of the things we've been reading this uh, this week, and that is uh, this uh, weird sense of deja vu, which is, I mean, I wasn't really deeply involved in some of the cypherpunk stuff and some of the privacy discussion and some of the, you know, discussions around the clipper chip. I was interested in them, but I wasn't directly involved in them um, so much. And uh, so, uh, but I have this deep feeling like there's these all these old guys with gray hair or, or no hair who are kind of thinking... We told them, like we told them two decades and three decades ago that this was going to be an issue. Uh, and one of these, one of the ways this is, this is an issue, and I'm not, by the way, I'm not sure that, that um, crypto is the solution to that issue, but one of the ways that uh, this is an issue is because it is so darned hard to get your hands around the concept of privacy. Uh, you know, there's the, 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 the first time we actually have something that's an articulable legal sense of privacy in the United States is uh, is a little over a century ago with the right to privacy, uh, you know, a, a law review article called the right to privacy. Uh, that that term, this idea that, that something in our lives should be protected, that we have the right to be left alone in some sense, is a fairly new one. And it's a new one because, you know, although people wanted to have some... Uh, some sense that they didn't have to show everything to their neighbors, right? That you could keep, you know, good walls make good neighbor, neighbors kind of thing. It also wasn't as pressing until people really moved in mass society into, into cities and were kind of pressed shoulder to shoulder. And that particular, I think we may talk about this elsewhere, but that particular case, the, that particular law review article, The Right to Privacy, was really meant to protect the very rich from paparazzi. And, uh, and a lot of that has shaped what we think of in terms of privacy. And so, you know, we, you know, it's one of those things where privacy, you'll know it, you know, you know it when you, when you see it kind of a thing, right? I know when my privacy has been inv invaded, but that's not really true. And so part of what they need to show is that privacy matters. There was always this, there's always this thing, which is if you're, if you're not doing anything wrong, why should you care if the government or anybody else sees what you're doing? And that was very much, you know, something that people would say in the nineties and the two thousands and the, even in the tens. And I think now we're getting to the point where, you know, uh, where people kind of say, okay, I wasn't doing any, anything wrong when I shared that nude, but I didn't expect it to be shared throughout the world, right? Uh, so th th there might be some, some things that you do that may not be illegal, but yet you don't necessarily want governments or companies to have access to them. And so one of the things they try to highlight in this is that privacy is not a matter of secrecy. Secrecy is, and I think this is a distinction they overdraw, but that secrecy is this issue of things that you don't want anyone to know, whereas privacy is something that uh, you want to share with a select group of people and then stop it from being shared beyond that. Cryptography cannot do that. You know, crypto is not the solution to that, at least not yet. Uh, I could imagine a crypto system that is kind of like a, you know, there, there have been a number of art pieces that once you see them, you know, you can read it once and then they destroy themselves. Uh, and you could imagine using some form of a cryptographic system. I mean, this is something like what a number of social media systems use for, you know, you can only view it. But of course, everyone knows that these kinds of destroy on read uh, systems are easily tackleable, right? All you have to do is take a snapshot. You can take a screenshot, or even if you can't for some reason take a screenshot, you can literally hold another camera up and take a picture of it, right? So there are some, some pretty serious uh, limits to being able to create a system where you actually have a technical way of enforcing privacy, of saying, here are the th people that I want to see this, and they cannot share it further at least in any kind of strict sense. Now, in a less strict sense, you can absolutely design systems that make it uh, explicit what the user wanted, you know, I, you know, make that list very visible and say, if you're seeing this and you're not on this list, then you're, you're violating what my expectations were. Uh, and if you're someone who this has been shared to, please don't share it beyond this. In fact, just this uh, yesterday, I needed to share a tweet of a colleague and realized that he was, uh, that I, it was unshareable because of the way he had set up his, his restrictions on, on Twitter. And so, uh, so there are ways of doing that, of kind of setting of trying to replicate our expectations around privacy online. The question is whether crypto really does that. There are some ways in crypto in which crypto does do that, right? One of those is end-to-end -end encryption. So uh, when I share something, when I send uh, an email to someone, 
um, this is probably a bad example. Let's just go, when I send a message to someone, uh, should the people between me and that person, should every, every computer and every administrator uh, that this email or this message bounces off of, should they be able to read my email or should it be put in the equivalent of a digital envelope, right? Should, that's kind of what encryption is. It's a digital envelope. So should I be able to make it so that only the intended receiver is able to actually read this. Now, whether they then take that the content of that envelope and photocopy it, that's up to them. But at least when I initially send it, should I be able to make it so that nobody along the way should be able to read it? Uh, and um, when, uh, you know, during this period in which the cypherpunks were working, that was the implication, right? Which is, we don't want a world in which there are no envelopes. And uh, more recently, we had a, a visit from a, a former director of the CIA, John Brennan. He directed CIA during the, the mid-teens, uh, 20-teens. Um, you know, he came to, to ASU's campus and gave a talk, and, and a lot of people wanted to know, so what's, what's the threat you see? You know, is it white nationalism and terrorism, you know, domestic terrorism? Is it um, the proliferation of nuclear weapons, especially, you know, smart bombs, or sorry, uh, uh, dirty, dirty nukes or dirty bombs or... Uh, or you know, more developed, you know, briefcase bombs or more developed tactical nuclear weapons or, or large scale, um, you know, intercontinental ballistic missiles being, uh, being put in the hands of countries that, whatever, you know, what's the major threat? And he said, the major threat is crypto. Um, you know, that, that, you know, for all those other ones, that's fine. But, but the kind of earth threat, the threat that overlaps all of those is the possibility that the spy agencies in the United States, chiefly the NSA and CIA who do signals intelligence, uh, would not be able to read their antagonists' emails. That this was the really, you know, if you had strong encryption and it was widely distributed, if in fact, you know, Apple did not give people, give the government a back door, if, et cetera, right? If, if strong encryption was widely used, that this was disastrous to the security of the United States. Um, and, you know, that the, on the other hand, there's, Again, this is dated, but the cypherpunks view that if you did not have strong encryption, you would uh, it would be disastrous, right? It, it it opens the door to authoritarianism, and it's interesting because you know on many of these political issues, I and lots of other people who think a lot about policy uh, are a big fan of the gray, right? We like the the messiness. We like the we realize that extreme positions are not are not good to be held. Uh, that the world is not black and white. And yet on this issue, if you talk to well-informed people, it really, there isn't a space for gray, right? Either, either you have strong encryption that is not easily breakable by governments and by individuals and by companies especially, or uh, you don't. <laughs> you know, it's not, the, there's no in-between space on this. And, and both sides will say it's the, end of, it's the end of everything as we know it if we don't have this. And so this was, a, this was that kind of drawing that line in the sand. And the funny part of that is, you know, I don't think most people in the audience would have, exp I was not surprised to hear him say that because if you've been watching this conversation over a long time, you know that that, that kind of determines what it means to do national intelligence or monitoring or policing in the United States and the world going forward. So this was not a surprise to me, but for the rest of the audience, I think they were looking for the, you know, the what's the threat that we're going to have to face over the next five years. And and what he saw this as is an existential threat to the United States. Um, and, and he's a thoughtful guy. You know, this is not, this is not an uninformed opinion at all. Uh, but but it's also not one that I necessarily agree with, right? I, I think that, that you have a point here among those who say that envelopes are a good thing. So uh, that's a hard nut to crack and one that nobody seems to want to look at very closely. So understanding privacy within that context of crypto, I think is really, really important. And uh, even though this document is not well written particularly, and it doesn't uh, do what I would like it to do in terms of making that statement as clear as possible, it did start, you know, make a public statement about what it meant to create technological and mathematical solutions uh, to surveillance and to allow people to maintain the privacy that they wanted.